on gas prices that appear to be dropping at the statewide level. Tucson's average for an unleaded gallon sits at $4.34 if you look at AAA data. It is a dip of 20 cents from a week ago. The average in Sierra Vista is still below that at $3.71. And if you're heading up to Phoenix for the weekend, you might run into gas stations offering $4.79 a gallon. Investigative reporter Joe Ducey has gotten dozens of calls and emails asking him about the factors driving these gas prices up in Arizona. Here's what he was able to dig up. Summer usually means higher gas prices, but five bucks a gallon? And why higher here than other places? Arizonans are fed up. Like viewer Gary asking why Midwestern state prices are lower when Arizona is near pipelines. Arizona does rely on pipelines to bring in gasoline. Well, there is like refineries in New Mexico and Texas that supply a lot of the gas in Arizona. They've been down for the last few weeks for maintenance. Julian Paredes with AAA says refinery maintenance has slowed supply to the south and eastern part of Arizona. The good news, it's gonna pick up soon. Guest buddies Patrick DeHaan says all pipelines in Arizona are being squeezed by our population boom, which added tens of thousands of drivers to the state. Pipeline capacity uh, has not gone up. So it's been very difficult to send enough gasoline into the market uh, with all the population increases that we've seen in the last several years. Let's show know viewer John H. asks why prices are so different county by county. We're told that's because not only can gas suppliers differ, but also the gas requirements, especially when it comes to summer blend gasoline. Arizona has its own blend of gasoline that it requires, so it's kind of like uh, we're acting to isolate Arizona. Arizona opted out of the EPA program, which sets a nationwide standard for summer gas, choosing to set its own requirements. That means suppliers have to make a gas just for Arizona, which is expensive. Cleaner burning gas is most strict in populated areas like Phoenix, making it more expensive compared to rural counties. In some instances, 50 cents to a dollar gallon more. And it all has to do with the fact that CBG, this clean burning gasoline, is very hard to find right now. On Monday, AAA says the average gas price across the country was $3.58, but it's $4.53 in Arizona, nearly a dollar more. Then there are stations that think they can just charge more than others, like this one near 32nd Street at Thomas and Phoenix. More than 550 for regular gas. Is there anything you could tell us about why the 559 for gas? I couldn't tell you, man. I couldn't tell you. So how do we get lower prices? Arizona could change their summer blend standards to match other states. That way, we have a bigger gas pool to pull from. And at some point, pipeline capacity will have to increase to match population growth. Do you like digging for answers or finding solutions? Become a Let Show Know Better Business Bureau volunteer. Check out the form online. I'm Investigator Joe Deuce. If you got a problem, let me know. 522, only one speller can stand on T.O.P. as the winner of the Scripps National Spelling Bee. We'll learn which word this 14-year-old champion figured out to take home the grand prize. And when, you can also witness the first ever camera live stream of life on Earth's Red Neighbor. You're watching Good Morning Tucson. Hi, Brooke 524. We are excited to share. We have a W I N N E R. What does that say? Winner. There we go. So Dev Shaw from Largo, Florida is your champion of the 95th annual Scripps National Spelling Bee. Yeah, Dev is a 14 year old eighth grader representing Morgan Fitzgerald Middle School. Dev won the spelling bee with the word Samophile. How do you spell that? I, I think you know we have it with us. My producer how you told me it? how to pronounce just, it right before it. too. P S A M M O P H I L E. So it could, I would it could never confuse know. somebody. It's an organism that anyways. likes to live in sandy soil. You saw the moment of maybe disbelief, relief for Dev right there. It's just mm. a wave of emotion. So because he got every letter right, he now goes home with a $50,000 grand prize. Gosh, at 14 years old. That's uh, can make a lot of difference for him. And hopefully yeah. he's prudent with that money. So Definitely. on the stage, you're seeing the 11 other students who made the finals. 11 million entered spelling wow. competitions this year just to qualify. 11 to 11. Let, uh, just the odds seem astronomical there, but yeah. uh, that's a happy, happy kid. Congratulations right there. to Congrats him. Congrats yeah. to Dev. So, this next story is going to take us, Brooke, to outer S P A C E. Space. There we go. <laughs> Mars could be the next trending topic on the internet pretty soon. Yeah, so the Red Planet will star in its very first ever YouTube live stream today. Now, the European Space Agency says it will stream an hour of the first live images taken directly from Mars. And the event celebrates the 20th anniversary. The ESA started its Mars Express mission. They wanted to take 3D images 
of the planet's surface. Well, even though the agency is calling it a live stream, it will not truly be live from Mars. Uh, you have to remember there's a nice little chunk of distance between yeah, just Mars a, and just us. Just a little. Yeah, the ESA thinks it'll take about 17 minutes for the light needed to form the images to then travel from Mars to Earth. Okay. And then it's going to take another minute to then make it to the servers on wow. the ground so you can see what's happening. Yeah, so astronauts hope to stream a new image every 50 seconds. The ESA says it will have the stream up on its YouTube channel starting at noon Eastern time. Look at where we are in technology that wow. even, you know, it's not maybe a technically true live stream that all it takes live is pictures. 17 minutes of almost live pictures of what life is like on Mars. And I bet in a few years we'll be like, oh, it's live and we'll probably see something on there. But that's that's a cool video right there. Oh, too. man, awesome. The, the final frontier, perhaps yeah. or water. You still got to explore yeah. deep space, deep undersea as well. All right, coming up in this next half hour, folks growing business to serve pizza lovers in Tucson. The Big Apple inspiration that got these entrepreneurs ready to open their new shop in the Mercado District. And I'll have a look at your weekend forecast. Stay with us. It's just about 527. You're watching Good Morning Tucson. You're watching K-Gun 9. Good morning, Tucson. Good morning to you, Tucson. I'm Jose Sosaya. We're approaching 530 on this happy Friday. Let's start this half hour checking in on your forecast. So we'll say good morning to our Brooke Chow. Uh, Brooke, you've seen the roller coaster from the weather desk throughout this week. Uh, how are we going to round it out as we head into the weekend? Well, you're going to round it out a little bit cooler than we normally are, but it's just going to heat back up and then go down again. That roller coaster, we're still on the ride and we're still holding on for dear life. But 66 right now, if you're just waking up in Tucson, about 62 for you in Marana, Cochise County in the upper 50s as well. This is seasonably a lot cooler than we normally would be right now. We'd normally be in about the 70 range, especially we're in the month of June. Monsoon is just about 13 days away. The official start to monsoon and the official start to summer is just a few days after on June 21st on Wednesday. So these temperatures are a lot cooler than what we're supposed to be, but don't hold your breath for too long because it's actually going to get a lot warmer as we head into the weekend. But here's really what it's looking like today. Tucson will top off in the low 90s. Sierra Vista upper 80s. All right, thank you very much, Brooke. We have more top stories this morning. Tucson police want to find a domestic violence suspect who ran away from a home. TPD called for help from SWAT officers to help in this investigation. Police drove to the scene near Fort Lowell and Stone. There, officers say they learned a woman ran away from the home Thursday while a male suspect was still inside. When officers entered the property, they found two infants who were not hurt. A Saudita man faces several charges after resisting arrest in this separate call to report domestic violence. SPD say Friday, May 26, the suspect refused to turn around and place his hands behind his back when officers approached him. SPD also say the man reportedly threatened officers and then tried to run away. Officers say they used both the taser and pepper spray to subdue the subject. Customs and border agents, along with Pinal County Sheriff's deputies, say they seized 93 pounds of fentanyl pills. Agents say this happened last week. You could see some of the images they published when they asked a driver in Eloy to pull over a, for a traffic stop. The suspect is a U.S. citizen. They and their passenger face criminal charges. The Arizona Court of Appeals rules many people are now eligible to have their records expunged for having sold cannabis. A local attorney tells Kagan 9 this decision helps clarify Prop 207. Voters passed that measure into law back in 2020, allowing adults to use marijuana recreationally and opening the door for some to have their criminal records expunged. Lawyers say people with a record for selling two and a half ounces or less can now start their application. Don't give up because there's, al there's always hope. You, you won't know until you find out, until you, you know, take on the process. We heard from someone going through the process there. The attorney we talked to notes that process will still take a few months, but could take even longer if there is an appeal. Tucson police now know the name of a woman killed in a deadly car crash back on April 8th. Officers say a pickup truck driver hit 27 year old Elizabeth Nydia Huntley. We'll follow any updates on this investigation on air and online. Two Douglas pastors now look to their congregation's future. Their historic churches suffered significant damage in last week's fires. Both leaders say they're working with insurance companies and their denomination supervisors to figure out what they can do next. 
Right now, their top priority is clearing the asbestos from the buildings, which could take up to four weeks. Meanwhile, both spiritual leaders say they want to meet with other local churches and find a temporary place to hold their services. 533 in Washington, the bipartisan deal to raise the debt ceiling now heads to President Biden's desk. The Senate passed this measure before midnight. 44 Democrats and 17 Republicans voted yes to help avoid a historic default. Senate Republicans won some guarantees the chamber will consider future national security and defense spending increases, including more aid to Ukraine. We cannot, cannot neglect our fundamental obligation to address the nation's most pressing national security challenges. The deal suspends the debt ceiling until January of 2025. It also pulls back billions of funding dollars for COVID support and IRS investment. It should preserve programs like Social Security and veterans benefits. Arizona Senator Mark Kelly shares his thoughts on the debt ceiling deal. After the vote, he wrote the agreement quote is a compromise, which means each side didn't get everything they want. But the most important part is that it avoids a devastating default End quote. Arizona's leaders say they will have to scale back their water conservation investments. Last year, lawmakers, including Governor Katie Hobbs, committed a billion dollars to fund projects that would boost water supply. The Water Infrastructure Finance Authority of Arizona was set to receive $333 million this year and over the course of three years, the same amount. In a press conference Thursday, the agency revealed it would now get a little more than half that amount. Governor Hobbs new budget redistributes some of the funds to other state water programs. Authority directors say they now worry current lawmakers do not see water augmentation as a priority. I think there's a real fear and a real potential that that signals to those folks who may have those good water augmentation ideas and want to be part of that investment that, OK, maybe this isn't as serious as we thought it was. Water Authority leaders say they're still optimistic they'll receive the original $1 billion commitment. New at 535 Health Advocates for Tribal Communities here in Southern Arizona will help their new director build relationships with families and incorporate medicine with both law and public policy. We checked in with the team at the Wasaja Carlos Montezuma Center. Executive Director Christina Andrews says she feels a strong passion to use her experience as a professor a master's of public health graduate and a member of the Tono Autumn Nation. Andrews tells me she's also worked to establish Pima County's Juvenile Indian Child Welfare Court. She tells me over time the center would like to build and evolve some of the work happening in other leading programs like the Johns Hopkins University Native American Health Center. It's not just the University of Arizona. We are now going to be reaching out to the tribes to be a part of this creation of this map that's gonna to lead to the vision of assisting our, of our relatives and creating and expanding this Native American Health Center, not only for the state of Arizona, but for the United States. And I wanna say the world. The team at the Wasage Center works inside the university's College of Medicine offices and as a unit of the Department of Family and Community Medicine. As the team gets to know each other more, Andrew says the most vital focus as a liaison will be to foster trust with tribe leaders over time and have a track record showing the center is listening and committed to invest in the community. The Arizona Board of Regents says it wants to solve the state's lower number of health care workers through the new AZ Healthy Tomorrow program. Arizona is 43rd in public health funding, 37th in available beds and 32nd in health care system performance. Arizona's three public universities hope to change that. U of A Medical School will join forces with Banner UMC to establish an academic medical center. Arizona State will launch ASU Health to create a new master's program and a new school of medicine and advanced engineering. NAU will announce its plans over this fall. The owners of Falora Pizza will add a second Tucson venture right here in the Mercado District. Owners Ari Shapiro and Travis Evans say the new store, Whole Slice Pizza, will be an homage to the classic New York Slice shop with a little Tucson flair. I spent a lot of time in New York City baking for some special people. So with all of those experiences I had in New York and then the ones I have here in Tucson, kind of combining the two together is kind of the way we conceive whole slice pizza. Evans says the slice of pizza or the style of pizza here will be a little different. Whole slice is expected to open late this fall. Fewer stork deliveries being sent to U.S. families. New data reveals record low birth rates overall, one trend going in the opposite direction for one group. 
And while it seems students stay on the edge of their seats for the start of summer, the transition from class to very little structure can leave some feeling overwhelmed. That's a closer look in our Health Minute on Good Morning Tucson. Alzheimer's drugs should be covered under Medicare Part B. Regulators say the drugs must be approved by the FDA first. Doctors have to provide information to registries explaining how the drug works. Two new Alzheimer's treatments are currently available, but only to patients enrolled in clinical trials. Under the new policy, that will change in the coming months if and when the medications receive FDA approval. Almost 541, the latest birth data from 2022 shows fewer U.S. adults are having babies. Health agency investigators say about 3.7 million babies were born last year. It's nearly 3,000 fewer than the prior year. In this data collection, they learned more moms age 35 and up are adding a baby to the family, but they contrast that with new record low birth rates among mothers in their teen years and early 20s. Now, the transition from school to summer break can leave some kids feeling excited. For others, the change can be hard and at times overwhelming for the entire family. In today's Health Minute, Mandy Gaither has some tips for parents on how to help kids manage their time and emotions. From the classroom to the living room, this time of year can bring a whole host of feelings. Some might be excited about the end of the school year and starting summer. Others might be a little uneasy. Some might be sad. And all of it's completely okay and normal. Licensed therapist Jody Balmstein says to ask children open-ended questions, listen to what they have to say, help kids name their feelings, and then validate what they feel. In any time of change, Balmstein says keeping a routine is key. That includes healthy eating habits, staying active, and getting enough sleep. Keeping meals and bedtimes the same can help too. When there's a lot of unknown and questioning happening, we don't necessarily feel the most calm or safe. But if we have a routine that's predictable and we know what to expect, kids feel a sense of comfort. And while everyone's getting used to being out of school, stay away from other unnecessary stressors. If there's something that doesn't really have to happen right now that could cause some extra stress on your child or the family, we just want to postpone that until we're a little bit further along, a little bit more settled. And Baumstein says, don't forget to make time for fun. Sometimes it feels like we don't have time for that. But those things actually make us feel more connected and more hopeful about the future, too. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. 5.43, a Rocky Mountain start for the underdog Miami Heat. In these NBA Finals, Denver shows perhaps that extra rest helped take game one. Those highlights are next. We're also going to check on some high numbers from your Friday forecast with Brooke Chow. Hi, Brooke. Hi, Jose. Yeah, enjoy today. Cooler temperatures for the first Friday of June, but we do have a weekend warm up on the way. I'll let you know more about that and also triple digits and a full look at your seven day forecast. Stay with us. It's just about 543. You're watching Good Morning Tucson. No matter what car you drive, one word will always sting. That's recall. But some brands appear more on this list of issues than others. Consumer reporter John Matteris has some important information about the recalls so you don't waste your money. It's safe to say that all drivers will have to deal with a recall at some point. But if you want to avoid the hassle, turns out that some brands and models have a much lower rate of recalls than others. We will look it up there and then we will notify that customer that there is an open recall. Matt Overbeck owns an auto repair shop and finds cars with unrepaired recalls all the time. Absolutely, every day. Matt says many of us just don't get around to having recalls fixed. Sometimes those notices just go unnoticed. According to a recent study from IC Cars, the average number of lifetime projected recalls is four. Of the vehicles with the least expected recalls, the brands Mercedes-Benz, Lexus and Toyota appear most often. Of the 25 most recalled cars, Tesla and Porsche models appear in the list four times each. IC Cars analyst Carl Brower says one recall out of the gate is fairly common. 
What's more disturbing is when they continue to just keep having recalls. That's where the data really pointed to cars that were just going to be troublesome for a longer period. We asked Carl if he expects more recalls on electric cars. They have a much simpler, more streamlined drivetrain, so there should be fewer parts that could be recalled. One positive, many recalls today are OTA or over the air, which means they don't require a dealership visit. One of its problems is solvable by software update kind of like your phone. The most important thing is to always bring your recalled vehicle in for the necessary fix. Or Matt Overbeck warns, it could be a rolling hazard. A couple years ago, we had a large airbag recall. There's many of those cars on the road that have not been uh, not been repaired yet. To check for recalls, run your VIN through the government site nhtsa.gov slash recalls and have it fixed so you don't waste your money. I'm John Matteris. Almost 551 Tucson Parks and Recreation gives another reason for families to check out a pool this summer. Starting June 8th, regular summer pool of parties will happen around town. These events will have some games, food, music, all kinds of fun for the family. You can go to kega9.com to read a little more about when these parties are happening at a pool near you. Our Kega 9 weather team and reporters have a special presentation for this upcoming monsoon. What could the season bring? It's our look at preparing for downpours, rescues, even dust storms, and wildfire dangers. So, watch Changing Patterns, Monsoon 2023. It's already streaming on all our platforms. First Warning Weather is sponsored by D&H Air Conditioning and Heating. Now, K-Gun 9 on your side, First Warning Weather. Here we are, Brooke, 551. Looking forward to the weekend. We've been talking about these temperatures are going to keep climbing a little bit, a little bit up, and I think folks will have the pool on their mind to try and cool off. Uh, it's summer, so you want to have that as close as possible as I you know. can. Can you believe we're already in June? Just 13 days away from the oh, official yes. start to monsoon. That's on June 15th, and then summer, the first day of summer is June 21st. So we're here. We should be where we're going to be this weekend, but today is our last, quote, cooler day of the week that we've been seeing those temperatures roller coaster ride that we're on. We're going to continue to be on that ride, so hold on. But if you're just now waking up about 66 degrees in Tucson, 62 for you in Marana, upper 50s in Cochise County and 65 in Benson. Like I just mentioned, that trend is just going to continue to keep going, but what's also going to continue to keep going is that dry air. Yesterday I showed you that dry air system that was really over the north end of our state, but you could see right here all of everything in orange above the north end of Mexico into the southeast portion of our state really is where that dry air is going. But if you take a look up here and you see this system. This is going to skirt right back down over here into the weekend, causing more dry air to just come right through our state. So expect dry air, breezy air, and even warmer temperatures on the way. Now, earlier this week, we talked about those wind gusts being anywhere from 15 to 25 miles per hour. We're going to see a little bit of that into the weekend, but it's definitely going to pick up Saturday and Sunday and into our work week as well. And those temperatures are going to rise just like it will this morning. By the time you reach that lunchtime hour, just about 85 degrees in Tucson, absolutely beautiful Friday and a perfect way to start off your weekend this morning. If you have plans tonight, here's what it's looking like for you. By the time we reach sunset, about 89 to 80 degree drop. That's going to be an absolutely beautiful night. If you have plans, get outside and enjoy it because it's definitely going to heat right back up. High temperatures today, 90 in Tucson, 92 in Marana, upper 80s for you in Cochise County. And then here comes the warm up. It's into tomorrow, 96 in Tucson, 99 in Phoenix probably flirting with triple digits this weekend up there. High 80s in Cochise County. Here's your day planner for today. Like I said, those winds won't really be the big story until later into the weekend hours. But by the time we reach lunchtime, about 85 in Tucson and 69 in Sierra Vista. We're expecting Tucson to top off today around 90 degrees. Cochise County also in the upper 80s as well. But enjoy the quote cooler day like I keep saying, because look at this weekend. Triple digits on Sunday and Monday in Tucson. Low 90s in Sierra Vista. But by the time we reach the middle of next week, already talking about our next cool down. All right, thank you, Brooke. Arizona's baseball's postseason journey continues. They're going to want to make a splash as an at-large bid in the NCAA tournament. The Wildcats open play in the Fayetteville Regional against TCU tonight. That game starts at 6, our local time. You can catch it on ESPNU. Let's jump over to game one of the NBA Finals. Denver hosting Miami. The Nuggets take advantage of their rest and their size over the Heat roster. From Wildcat, Aaron Gordon dominating the first quarter, muscling his way into the paint for back-to-back -back buckets. Gordon dropped 12 points in this first quarter. Jamal Murray on the night finishes with 26 points. Gordon brings 16 to the mix. Nikola Jokic, two-time MVP, ends up with a triple-double. 
Denver wins this one 104 to 93. Game two still in Denver is this Sunday. All right, the WNBA Tech Center Court tonight on our sister network ION. This is your Friday night spotlight. Starting at five, Las Vegas plays Atlanta. Former Wildcat star Ari McDonald has a role to play on the Dream roster. Then at seven, the LA Spark face Brittany Griner and the Mercury in Phoenix. All right, today you can make time to celebrate one sweet thing in life. It's National Donut Day, and we'll reveal the winners for Bash's 2023 Donut Creation Contest. Be warned, you may get extra hungry for breakfast. All right, Brooke, I don't know if a lot of us had this uh, day circled off in the calendar. It's a great way to start the month, by the way. It's Yummy National way. Donut Day. <laughs> so a better way to celebrate than with uh, talking about the winners of Bash's Donut Contest. Yeah, so the grocery store change challenged Arizonans to come up with the most delicious and creative donut flavor that they could think of. The top flavors from both adult and youth creators will be featured in pastries in all of the Bash's bakeries this summer. All right, so let's start real wow. quick with the winning flavors of 2023. Okay. Coconut lemon meringue on the left so the congrats left. to 15 year old Peyton from Apache Junction that is the winning entry for the kids that's a very advanced palette right there yeah okay next is banana cream pie this concoction comes from Bash's employees Sherry Holland and Flagstaff you can see some of the that's banana one on the right squeezing on the right there Yum. and in the middle it's a PB and J donut okay. so the filling is strawberry topped with peanut butter flavored frosting a shout out there to Sarah Williams from Maricopa for that again creative another way to repackage PB and J and imagine like I'm already imagining My just stomach grabbing that is dipping growling. it with a cup of coffee some milk there's some protein in the peanut butter as well for folks oh that's forget care about it you deserve like, a sweet treat once in a while but there's sugar in the peanut butter as well. you're not going to escape the sugar is what we're saying oh anyway gosh, those look good they do we'll have to celebrate hungry. after the show good morning Tucson at six starts now though we'll be right back on air, online, on your side. You're watching KGUN 9. Good morning, Tucson. Another step closer to avoiding a government debt default on Good Morning Tucson. What leaders have left to do now that the Senate has passed the compromise. A Southern Arizona nonprofit devising a creative new way to make healthy meals fun and accessible for students and their families. And in a moment in time when hundreds of local businesses had to close their shop, one entrepreneur opened the door to a new restaurant. His message to others who want to pursue this passion. Good morning to you, Tucson. I'm Jose Sosaya. We'll begin in Washington. The bipartisan deal to raise the debt ceiling will now head to President Biden's desk. The Senate passed the measure only hours ago, a day after the bill got the needed support in the House. Here's ABC's Justin Finch. With only days to spare, the Biden-McCarthy debt ceiling deal cleared the Senate. The yeas are 63, the nays are 36, the 60-vote threshold having been achieved, the bill is passed. The upper chamber passing the compromise legislation after racing through a series of amendment votes and incoming fire from some senators on the right and left. The people who negotiated this, I wouldn't let them buy me a car. This debt ceiling agreement will cut programs for some of the most vulnerable people in America. In a statement, President Biden thanks Senate leaders for quickly passing the bill and adding no one gets everything they want in a negotiation and calling the bipartisan agreement a big win for our economy and the American people. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer hailing Democrats for pushing the package through Congress. We did a very good job of taking the worst parts of the Republican plan that would have hurt so many families, and we took those worst parts off the table. Senate Republicans winning guarantees the chamber will also consider future national security and defense spending increases, including aid for Ukraine. We cannot, cannot neglect our fundamental obligation to address the nation's most pressing national security challenges. The deal, brokered by the president and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, suspends the debt ceiling until January 2025, pulls back billions in COVID and IRS funding, and preserves programs including Social Security and veterans' benefits. Congress managed to pass the deal before June 5th when Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen warned the U.S. could default and potentially trigger an economic crash. The president now set to sign the bill soon and address the nation tonight. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. 
First Warning Weather is sponsored by D&H Air Conditioning and Heating. Now, K-Gun 9 on your side, First Warning Weather. Here we are at 602 saying good morning to our Brooke Chow. So Brooke, we've enjoyed something nice for National Donut Day and let's talk some nice temperatures if we're heading into the weekend. These warm ups uh, folks yeah. might look forward to. I know. Can you believe it's already Friday? TGIF. Yes. Definitely no June gloom here in Southern Arizona, waking up to an absolutely beautiful way to start our weekend. Just about 65 degrees here in Tucson, 63 for you in Marana, upper 50s in Cochise County, already about 65 in Benson as well. And we're really just going to continue that warming trend as we get into the later hours of the morning and definitely into the afternoon. The winds aren't going to really be the big story today. Pretty minimal anywhere from 15 to 20 mile per hour gusts. The sustained winds are really when we need to worry about that fire watch and warnings as well. Still really, really dry out there, but Tucson should top off in the low 90s. Sierra Vista low 80s, but coming up, I'll have a full look at the weekend warm up and yeah, triple digits are on the way for the start of our work week. And I'll also have a look at your seven day forecast. All right, thank you, Brooke. A team of Southern Arizona advocates uses its deep knowledge of public health policy and law to research ways our local native tribes can enjoy a healthier quality of life. Already in her first week leading the Wasage at Carlos Montezuma Center, the new executive director tells me she is counting on her team as well to look at a holistic approach that helps all members in a family unit. Well, Christina Andrews will bring her experience as a professor, a law school and master's of public health graduate, and a member of the Tono Autumn Nation. Andrews also worked to establish Pima County's Juvenile Indian Child Welfare Court. With this perspective in our conversation, Andrews tells me she hopes the Wasage Center can start to combine science and medicine with justice reform to lower the rates, for example, of native incarceration and child welfare cases. It's not just the University of Arizona. We are now going to be reaching out to the tribes to be a part of this creation of this map that's going to lead to the vision of assisting our of our relatives and creating and expanding this Native American Health Center, not only for the state of Arizona, but for the United States. And I want to say this. Now the team at the Wasage Center works inside the UA College of Medicine's office as a unit of the Department of Family and Community Medicine. Coming up later, I'll share part of our conversation where Andrews shares the most crucial component to building stronger relationships with local tribal leaders. Almost 605, the National Foster Youth Initiative reports 20% of all kids in the system instantly become homeless once they're 18 and told they will not have access to the support. A local group, IMU 360, wants to step in as a safety net by building a tiny home village. We're following crews build this village of 10 homes, nine living spaces for young adults, and one community room. The residents have their own bathroom, dinette, and bedroom. And in this three year program, group leaders say the new adults will also pay rent each month and learn about financial literacy. It would be $225 each month for the next three years so that we could put that in escrow. And at the end of the three years, we can actually give that back to them and they will be able to purchase their first starter home. The organization has a complex of 10 studio apartments. Once this property is finished, IMU 360 hopes to build another 10 unit neighborhood. The team hopes this village will be ready to welcome residents by the end of the summer. Another nonprofit wants to connect local children dealing with food insecurity with steady, nutritious meals. Arizona has the third highest rate of food insecurity among Western U.S. states. Tucson itself highlighting in a problem area with more than 100,000 people in Pima County actively struggling. That's why the team at Tucson Family Food Project says it wants to reduce the rate providing students affordable meal kits they can take home. Our goal is to feed kids, but we don't want to stop there in feeding them one meal. That we have a long-term goal where we actually want to teach kids how to feed themselves. The kits right now cost $4, but provide food for enough for four people. This past school year, the project says it fed more than 100 families per week. This morning, we're also sharing a local business owner's journey. He went against the grain during the worst of the pandemic by opening three restaurants that have since thrived. Now on your sides, Kenny Dar asks him about his choice to start when so many others were forced to stop. While thousands of restaurants were closing their doors for good in 2020, one restaurant owner saw an opportunity and took a leap of faith, a leap of faith that's paid dividends three years later. Wow. is. 
it, it'd be a lot of roller coaster, you know, when, when we first opened during the pandemic. In 2020, when the COVID-19 pandemic took the world by storm, virtually all industries would feel the impacts to come. How, how, was, how was everything? One of the hardest hit industries would be food and beverage, one that Bud Say So has been in for 22 years. It was, it was scared. It was scared. I, but I didn't show it. I said, hey, we're doing okay. But, you know, I was smiling. I'm paling on that, but I'm, I'm dying. But I didn't show it because I need to show them that we will be okay. Say So is the owner of Tuk Tuk Thai, a no frills restaurant serving authentic Thai dishes. The Texas native was living in Portland, Oregon, where he was already operating a restaurant when he would make one of the biggest leaps of faith in his 22 year career. Yeah, my, my, my wife uh, encouraged me. He would spend about a year of planning and traveling back and forth from Portland to Tucson before officially opening in September 2020. At any point, did you question what if this doesn't work? No, I'm very positive. You know, I'm very positive. When did you get to the point where you're like, I think we can start to expand a little bit? Well, when we first closed Campbell, we were just, we were very popular at, at, at day one. And then, then I realized that a lot of people from Oro Valley was eating down there. Say so says today, business is booming across his three locations a testament to taking risks during challenging times. So, Something he hopes inspires the business owners of tomorrow. You know, um, do your homework and you have to love what you're doing because most people, oh, I want to open a, a restaurant for fun. It's not fun, it's hard work. Reporting in Aura Valley, Kenny Dar, Kega 9, on your side. At 609, the owners of Flora Pizza will add a second Tucson venture in the Mercado District. Owners Ari Shapiro and Travis Evans say their new store there, Whole Slice Pizza, will be an homage to the classic New York, New York Slice shop with a little Tucson flair. I spent a lot of time in New York City baking for some special people. So with all of those experiences I had in New York and then the ones I have here in Tucson, kind of combining the two together is kind of the way we conceive Whole Slice Pizza. Uh, Evan says the style of pizza will be a little different to the original. Whole Slice is expected to open late this fall. Coming up, a change in plans to invest in Arizona's long-term water security. How Governor Katie Hobbs' upcoming budget leaves water authority leaders wondering how they will fund their own projects. City leaders in one Iowa community fear time is running out to search for survivors of this collapsed apartment building. The update's next on Good Morning Tucson. An update from Arizona Forestry and Fire. Crews say they've contained 100% of the Cedar Creek wildfire. Investigators say the fire grew to 106 acres. Ground crews worked in tandem with plane pilots to douse the flames. They'll retrace the fire's path to check for any remaining hot spots. The Pima County Sheriff's Department says it won't have to issue any new evacuations. Arizona lawmakers committed a billion dollars last year to fund projects to boost our water supply. It appears the state will now scale back that promise. The Water Infrastructure Finance Authority of Arizona was set to receive $333 million a year over the course of three years. Following Governor Katie Hobbs' office update on a big announcement, we learned the authority may only receive a little more than half that amount because the new budget redistributes some of the funds to other water programs in the state. The authority's leaders say they worry current lawmakers do not see water augmentation as a priority. I think there's a real fear and a real potential that that signals to those folks who may have those good water augmentation ideas and want to be part of that investment that, okay, maybe this isn't as serious as we thought it was. Water Authority directors say they are still optimistic they'll receive the $1 billion that was originally planned. This morning, ABC News got a hold of new video showing the moment an Iowa apartment building partially collapsed. The Nest Cam shows the wall starting to buckle. You see it right there, the debris falling down on the Stavenport parking lot and street before the entire wall comes crashing down. The video ends as the collapse cuts the, its power line. Overnight, Davenport City leaders published a new missing person poster with a third person, Daniel Preem. Local police say he, Brandon Colvin, and Ryan Hitchcock were likely in their homes when the collapse happened. Reporters have also followed Colvin's son sleeping near the scene. His mom says he was set to graduate from high school this weekend. I tried to drop him off to Monday, 
Tuesday, excuse me, Tuesday to school to do his finals. Because <laughs> what else are we supposed to do? Okay, you have to go finals, so try. And he just broke down and ran right back here. So in my mind, it's just like if he needs to sleep here to satisfy his mind and soul, it's like I'll sleep right there with you, baby. On Thursday, the chief city building inspector resigned after getting backlash for potential oversights that could have prevented the collapse. 614 gas, nearly $5 a gallon for some. Yeah, it's summer break time, but Arizona has felt the brunt of higher average prices for some time. Investigator Joe Ducey works to get some answers and explanations. We're also talking some Friday forecasts with our Brooke Chow. Hi, Brooke. Hi, Jose. Yeah, we have a weekend warm up on the way. Triple digits are here. When will we expect to see them? I'll have that for you coming up and also a look at your full seven day forecast. It's just about 615. Stay with us. You're watching. Good morning, Tucson. First Warning Weather is sponsored by D&H Air Conditioning and Heating. Now, K-Gun 9 on your side. First Warning Weather. All right, 617, let's check in again with our Brook Chow. Nice start. Our first Friday of June, if you can believe it, Brooke, and we're going to expect that warm up. Uh, so have those weekend plans. Try to keep things cool and hydrated. Definitely hydrate, 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 because we do have triple digits in our forecast. But believe it or not, yeah, we're in June. We're only about 13 days away from the official start to monsoon, and the first day of summer is June 21st. So we're on our way to those warm temps, but enjoy the cooler weather today. If you're just now waking up, 65 degrees right now in Tucson, we're in a 60. If you're headed out the door in Cochise County, low 50s, already about 65 in Benson. And we're just really going to continue that warming trend and also the dry trend. I always like to show you a little bit of the water vapor forecast. That way you could see where this dry air is coming from. I showed you yesterday. It was really over the north end of our state, but you could see the system is just really blanketing the southeast portion and even into North Mexico. But I want to bring your attention a little bit to this system right here. This will eventually skirt down into our weekend and bring that dry air more into our our state into the weekend as well. So breezy conditions, but not as much as what we saw earlier this week. 15 to 20 mile per hour gusts this weekend. The gusts are different than the sustained winds. The sustained winds are what we can expect all day. Those gusts are just those instant winds that we feel. So we could see anywhere from about 5 to 10 mile per hour gusts later today. But look at that hourly forecast for your morning. By the time you reach that lunchtime hour, about 85 to 87 degrees. Tucson is expected to top off in the low 90s today. So absolutely beautiful start to your Friday morning and an even better Friday evening planner by the time we reach sunset at about 6 to 7 p.m. dropping about 9 degrees. So if you have plans tonight is the night to do it because we definitely have a warm up on the way. High temperatures today 90 in Tucson, 92 in Marana. If you're headed up to Phoenix this weekend, 93 degrees Cochise County in the low 80s. But take a look at this by the time we reach tomorrow, 96 in Tucson, almost 100 degrees in Phoenix, upper 80s in Cochise County as well. If you're planning out to your Friday. You could see by the lunchtime hour about 85 degrees in Tucson, 69 for you in Sierra Vista. Again, Tucson is expected to top off at about 90 today. That's really, really cool from what we normally are. About 98 degrees is what we should be. But look at that triple digits on Sunday, definitely ling lingering in it to our work week. By the time we hit the middle of the week, we're already expecting another cool down. All right, thank you, Brooke. As we cruise into the weekend, let's check in on some gas prices that appear to be dropping average statewide. Tucson's for an unleaded gallon sits at $4.34. If you look at AAA data, it's down nearly 20 cents from a week ago. The average in Sierra Vista is still running lower at about $3.71. And if you're heading up to Phoenix for the weekend, expect to pay around $4.79. Investigative reporter Joe Ducey has gotten dozens of calls and emails asking about the factors driving up gas prices in Arizona. Here's what he was able to dig up. Summer usually means higher gas prices, but five bucks a gallon? And why higher here than other places? Arizonans are fed up. Like viewer Gary asking why Midwestern state prices are lower when Arizona is near pipelines. Arizona does rely on pipelines to bring in gasoline. Well, there is like refineries in New Mexico and Texas that supply a lot of the gas in Arizona. They've been down for the last few weeks for maintenance. Julian Paredes with AAA says refinery maintenance has slowed supply to the south and eastern part of Arizona. The good news, it's gonna pick up soon. Guest buddies Patrick DeHaan says all pipelines in Arizona are being squeezed by our population boom, which added tens of thousands of drivers to the state. Pipeline capacity uh, has not gone up. So it's been very difficult to send enough gasoline into the market uh, with all the population increases that we've seen in the last several years. 
Let's show know viewer John H. asks why prices are so different county by county. We're told that's because not only can gas suppliers differ, but also the gas requirements, especially when it comes to summer blend gasoline. Arizona has its own blend of gasoline that it requires. So it's kind of like uh, we're acting to isolate Arizona. 